Hello, this and my other YouTube videos are extracted from the History of Man series, currently six books published in print, ebook, and most importantly, audiobook. I'm a storyteller, and if you like these video stories, you'll love the History of Man series audiobooks. Great for commuting or just sitting back and relaxing. And unlike a novel you've read where you know the ending, you can listen to these books on tape more than once. There's so much to learn. Available on Amazon and audible.com, I narrate the audiobooks. And the best part about that is you can listen to these stories without having to look at my stupid face. And with that said, let's get the show on the road. Hello, this is John Bershoff with another episode of History of Man series. Today's topic, last man standing, last woman standing too. Homo habilis was the first line of humans. Habilis arising on the Africa savanna about 2.4 million years ago from the missing link like Lucy, between ape and man. Lucy was discovered by paleontologist Donald Johansson in 1974 in Ethiopia. She was named after the song, Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds, 1967 Beatles, Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band album. Apparently John Lennon's son, Julian, who was age three at the time, had done a nursery drawing with a girl floating in the sky with diamonds, and he wrote the song. And the night before Lucy was discovered by Joe Hansen's dig team, the night before, they were probably around their campsite drinking wine and listening to Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds. The next day, they find Lucy in the dirt, the song's ringing in their ears, and there you have it. Now, Homo habilis is called habilis because he and she were handy with their tools. They had what's called the opposable thumb. I cannot get into great detail with it right now, but if you look at your feet, or if you look at an ape hand, all the digits are in the same plane. But in humans, in our line, the thumb, this digit rotated and allowed it to be opposable, allowed us to grab things, to, to be dexterous, and that, was a genetic aberration that became a favorable trait in the survival for life, the opposable thumb. Louis Leakey and his wife Mary discovered in 1959 a 1.75 million year old Homo habilis skull, Odiva Gorge in Kenya. This was the first of the Homo line ever discovered with that opposable thumb. Next came Homo erectus, who arose about 2 million years ago on the savanna and called erect because, not what you think, but because he and she walked erect. They were bipedal, not quadrupeds on all four dragging their knuckles. Being erect allowed for speed, agility, carrying things, hunting, you name it. It was a huge evolutionary change discovered by Richard Leakey son of Lewis and Mary, a complete skeleton of Erectus called Turkana Boy, discovered near Lake Turkana in Kenya. And then came the Homo sapien line. So you've got Habilis, Erectus, and Sapiens. Those are the three main lines. And Homo sapiens emerged on the world scene about 300,000 years ago in Africa. Sapiens from the Latin meaning wise, as in wise man, although we all know that's debatable. Cro-Magnon is a Homo sapien line. Cro-Magnon discovered in France was the first of the sapiens discovered 1868 by Louis Lartet. Actually, it was an excavation team who found the bones, called in Lartet, and he identified them. Now, the reason our Homo line left Africa was because of the Isthmus of Panama closure 2.8 million years ago. Plate tectonics 
North America and South America were once a part, the Pacific and the Atlantic connected of what, about where Panama is. But about 2.8 million years ago, these two continents crashed into each other, closing off that isthmus. And that changed the weather patterns in the Atlantic Ocean. And people that live in Southeast United States and Florida and stuff know those weather patterns. What it does is it drew the moisture off Africa. And that, besides causing the storms, caused a drought in Africa. And eventually our species had to migrate out up north into Europe to find food and to survive. Now, the first wave of the Homo sapiens to leave Africa were those who would become Homo sapiens neanderthalus or Neanderthal man. They left two to 300,000 years ago. They actually left as Homo uh, sapien and they evolved into Neanderthal while in Europe. They're called Neanderthal because they were first discovered in 1856 in the Neander Valley in Germany. They were short, stocky, not very wise, and they roamed Europe unimpeded until Homo sapiens, Cro-Magnon, arrived on the scene in waves into Europe, beginning about 100,000 years ago out of Africa, and a second wave maybe 50,000 years ago because of that drought of the weather pattern changes. Now, Cro-Magnon became Cro-Magnon in Africa. Cro means cave, and you're going to love this. Magnon, because they were discovered on property owned by a Frenchman named Magnon. So Cro-Magnon, cave Magnon. So the last two Homo sapien lines standing were Neanderthal, who became Neanderthal in Europe, not in Africa, and Cro-Magnon, who became Cro-Magnon in Africa, not in Europe, before leaving to Europe. Now, there were probably other Homo sapien lines in Africa, but they became extinct into the fossil record. And for 20,000 years or so, Neanderthal and Cro-Magnon shared the stage of human history. Maybe some interspecies hanky-panky, but mostly little genetic sharing. There must have been something in Africa, something missing in Europe that allowed Cro-Magnon in Africa to evolve further than Neanderthal in Europe to one day be able to step through the next door of evolution where Neanderthal could not. Uh, Cro-Magnon were taller, more agile, larger brain pan. Now, why did Neanderthal become extinct? Well, one sobering possibility, and likely is true, is war or battle. Cro-Magnons killed Neanderthals, not out of any joy or pleasure, but to protect the tribe. The two worlds clashed, and only one would survive, Cro-Magnon. That wasn't the only reason. Infection played a big part in why Cro-Magnon survived and Neanderthal didn't. When Cro-Magnon left Africa and entered Europe, they brought with them their infections, infections that Neanderthal's immune system had never seen. And these infections, virus or bacteria, wiped out Neanderthals or weakened them, making the business of them going extinct or outwitting them in battle easy. And the reverse was not true. Sure, there were infections in Neanderthal, and they had, that they likely brought with them from Africa to Europe. But when Cro-Magnon showed up in Europe, they had probably, their immune systems had already seen these African viruses and bacteria. So they were not as affected by infection as Neanderthal was. The other reason is Cro-Magnon possessed superior survival instincts, larger brain, including being able to deal with weather, better at hunting, and better at avoiding being hunted by other animals. Finally, the fourth reason why Neanderthal probably went the way of the dodo bird and Cro-Magnon didn't was division of labor. Cro-Magnon had specialists in certain areas where Neanderthals had jack of all trades, master of none. All the Neanderthals hunted, all of them gathered, all of them built uh, 
homes or whatever in caves and stuff like that. No one mastered anything, whereas Cro-Magnon had their hunters and their gatherers and their builders. And because of specialization, they became better at the survival things that needed to develop in order to step through the next door of evolution. And we are Homo sapiens sapiens. It's a repeat. It's an extant species. It's the last surviving member of the Homo line from 2.4 million years ago. Homo sapiens sapiens. And most paleontologists and evolutionists believe we are done. There is no more evolution for our line. This is it. We are at the end. I hope you enjoyed this. These stories like these are in my History of Man series books. This is the first History of Man. I got six out. I'm going to do more. They're on print, Kindle, audiobook. Every page you turn, you'll learn something, or you should learn something. It's a jumping off style of writing. It's not for everyone, but there's a lot to learn, and they should be kind of fun. Thank you very much for listening. You have a good day, and be well. Bye.